guys and welcome to today's video. Today I've got a whole box of empties to show you and um, there's quite a lot so we should probably get started. It's going to be in no particular order because there's just so much that I haven't really ordered anything um, but I will try and grab things in somewhat of a collective. I've got two dry shampoos to show you. I haven't actually kept all the ones that I have finished just because I end up having so many. I've got the Batiste Heavenly Volume Dry Shampoo, which I actually really do like. I would probably repurchase it, although I don't necessarily love it that much more than the original scents. Um, and I think it's a little bit more expensive, about a pound more, but um, it's not as over the top as the XXL volume dry shampoo by Batiste which leaves my entire house exceptionally dusty and is quite hard to work in. I think this is a little bit easier to use. I've then kind of done a 360 and I actually really really like Colab. Initially I didn't really get the hype, I just wasn't a huge fan. Didn't really feel that it kind of soaked up that many oils but I've recently been using the extreme volume version and I've really really liked it I would probably pick this up I think it's about the same price as Batiste and I would just as happily use this as I would Batiste on to two products which aren't strictly finished but I thought I would touch on because I'm going to throw them away the first one really not that exciting it's the skin system nail varnish remover own brand from Asda I learnt my lesson I have not finished this this did not work and I won't be buying an own brand nail polish remover anytime soon. The Sally Hansen one, however, is incredible. And then, sadly, I really, really love the Hishi Rapid One Hour Tan, but mine's gone green, pretty much the same colour as my top, actually. Um, so I won't be using this. Um, it's a shame. It's still an excellent tan, but just make sure you don't have it open for too long. A few makeup items to touch on. Um, I'm getting rid of all my bourgeois foundations. Sadly, I really, really do like Healthy Mix. I finished this one, but I, I used one about two weeks ago, and I've never regretted using a foundation so much. I got like severe, like cystic under the skin, really sore spots. And I won't be doing that yet. I've actually got a bit of scarring and I don't tend to scar after spots so won't be repurchasing this. I still think they're great foundations if you're not sensitive to them but if like me you're a little bit sensitive to certain scents and ingredients don't go for this. I'm getting rid of my Urban Decay Perversion Super Saturated Ultra Intense Waterproof Cream Liner and that's because it's completely evaporated. It like shrunk and I know that gel liners don't typically last very long but I've never seen it completely disappear well not completely but I've never seen it disappear like this one has there's no product left around the edges I've just got a hard um, black bit in the middle decent liner if it hadn't evaporated I finished my NARS Shea Glow and I use the colour Medium 2 Santa Fe um, good foundation don't necessarily love it as everyone else as much as everyone else does but I am tempted to repurchase it to kind of see if I can fall in love with it, but um, I have obviously finished this one. This is the only bottle I've ever had. Maybe I've had two. Oh, I can't throw away the pump. I almost did, because um, these don't come with a pump. But um, it was one of those foundations that I've had sitting in my drawer for a little while. I had like one use left of it, so I've only had one use recently. I don't really remember that much about this foundation, so I'm not going to comment too much on it. Let me know if you love this foundation, and I might repurchase. And then a lip liner, and this is the Rimmel Exaggerate Full Colour Lip Liner. I have this in East End Snob. I have repurchased two of these um, since finishing this one. They're both still like almost new. But I love this liner. Everyone compares it to Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. But I actually think I prefer this. Especially if I want to use it all over the lip. I think the other one is great if you do want to kind of make your lips look a little bit fuller. But this one's great if you just want a good liner. And it's super duper inexpensive. I think it's like $2.99 or $3.99. So I would really, really recommend trying it. I've also finished my Nukes Rev de Miel. This is the one that I kept in my car. And so it just went a little bit funny. It kind of was in there through the hot months and through the cold months, so it almost went a bit exfoliating like. It's just got um, it's just got a bit funny. There's little um, crystals in it almost, so I wouldn't use it. But it is an excellent lip balm. Just don't keep it in your car. And I have pretty much finished it anyway. I want to know how to pronounce this brand, guys. If anyone knows, let me know. But I think it's the Omavitska. That's what I've been pronouncing, how I've been pronouncing it for ages. But it seems that I swap the C and the Z. I'm a Vixer. I'm a Vixer? I'm not sure. But this is the Thermal Cleansing Balm from Omavitska. And I love this stuff. 
so expensive. I think it's like £45, £49, but the best cleanser. Um, there is one that I possibly like more than this, but I haven't used that one in years because it's really, really expensive. So this is kind of like the best cleanser, I would say, for under £50. It's kind of good skin in a jar, as far as I'm concerned. But another one that I really like, and is quite a lot cheaper, I think it's about half the price, and smells incredible, is the Wild Rose Beauty Balm by Neil's Yard. This one is in the 10th anniversary edition, but really, really great balm cleanser, very luxurious, and just really removes makeup beautifully, and, and it doesn't strip the skin at all. I almost think it hydrates the skin. It doesn't leave a residue or anything like that, so we would definitely recommend this if you're looking for a good balm cleanser for about £25, I think. I finished another one of my favourite Too Faced mascaras, Better Than Set. It's probably about my third tube and I've opened another one. Best mascara ever, I pretty much don't stray from this. I think in a month I might use another mascara once. This just is the best mascara ever as far as I'm concerned. A product that seems to be a favourite with everyone is the Philip Kingsley Elasticizer. I like this product but I don't love it as much as everyone else does probably wouldn't repurchase. It's a nice hair mask, but not groundbreaking. Doesn't really like change my hair that much. I know that some people swear by this, but for me, it was just a nice hair mask. I've also finished my second tub of Clinique Sparkle Skin Body Exfoliating Cream. I really like this. It's super minty, which is a little bit weird, um, but it's not too abrasive. I find this one of those products are quite it's quite relaxing to use because it's not too harsh but um, I like the tingly sensation it leaves on my skin so it's quite a nice relaxing product to use and exfoliate my legs with. Um, it's quite a nice me time product. Not too expensive and I really like the packaging. It's quite light but you get quite a lot of product. Two more exfoliators to talk about. The Clarins Exfoliating Body Scrub for Smooth Skin with Bamboo Powder, Softens, Smooths and Firms. Quite like this. The packaging is the bane of my life though. I think the nozzle makes it quite hard to get the product out and then the plastic is fairly hard. When I'm in the bath trying to get the product out it can be quite a challenge. I would reuse this, potentially wouldn't repurchase though. I don't think it was incredible or anything like that. One that really did surprise me though is the Coco Brown Tough Stuff, a no-nonsense three-in-one body scrub. It annoys me that it claims that it prepares for tan, removes stubborn old tan and is an exfoliating body treatment because I think that's what you'd expect from any exfoliator but really really good, not too expensive. I quite like the smell and I just think that it removed my tan particularly well um, and I would repurchase this especially because I don't think it's too expensive and Kind of sad that I hadn't discovered this ages. I had this for a while before I even bothered trying it. So I would definitely recommend looking into this if you're looking for a affordable exfoliator. Now quickly on to hair products. I have two shampoos. I have the Moroccan Oil Clarifying Shampoo. This is left over from when I had my hair extensions about a year ago now. Great as a once every two weeks shampoo to remove any buildup you may have. However, really, really, really drying at the same time. So if you have particularly dry hair, then you're just going to want to use this on your roots to remove any buildup. But avoid using this on your ends. It is colour safe, which is good. And it's kind of similar to the Bumble and Bumble Sunday shampoo. But I find this one to be far more stripping. So... Probably wouldn't use this one again. One that I have quite enjoyed is the Kevin Murphy Plumping Wash, which is supposed to kind of plump out each individual hair. I'm not sure if it does that. I do think it makes your hair look a little bit fuller, but it's quite expensive. I think this is about £18. Um, I do really, really like it. I'm not sure if I will repurchase it, though, just because it is pretty pricey. Um, I will consider it, though, so... It's more than can be said for most shampoos, because usually I'm not very loyal to shampoos. Um, pretty hard to get hold of in England. I know you can get it in Grow London hair salons, but I'm not sure where else you can get it. That's where I got mine. I didn't buy the conditioner because it's quite expensive and I just feel like I can use any other conditioner that I've already got at home. But if you are looking for a product that does claim to kind of thicken your hair, then this is a good one to try along with Neoxin. I've also finished my Kerastase VIP Volume and Powder. Really like this stuff. Kind of similar to the Bumble and Bumble Dry Spun. Just kind of prefer this one. I don't think it's quite as wet and I don't think it kind of 
I don't think you can feel it as much in your hair, but it kind of gives me the same effect, so really like this one. And the final product is good old Moroccan oil. I love this stuff. I think it helps kind of make your hair look a little bit shinier and healthier. It is topical, so I don't think it actually makes your hair healthier. It does help to make your hair dry quicker as well, which is great. Love the pump, and I just think it's a great product that everyone has to try. Little bit pricey, possibly, but a must-try product, in my opinion. And that's the end of my empties and my mini reviews. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've tried any of the products that I've spoken about below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll leave all the links below, and I'll see you hopefully later in the week in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.